In order to hit the $500 price point for RTX 2070s, manufacturers had to cut a lot of corners, and we might talk about that more later. And it's not really the manufacturers, the board partners, to blame on this fully, because there are reasons working with NVIDIA that they do have to meet those $500 price points. And so what we're doing today is we're looking at what's the difference between a $500 MSRP card, like the 2070 Black from EVGA, and a good one, a $550 card. Now, the, the, the black version is fine, but an extra 50 bucks does get you a whole lot more cooler. It goes from two slots to 2.7 slots, and the fan profile is quite different. You'll see that in our review if you're curious. The VRM is different. The PCB is significantly larger. There's more stuff on there, and uh, these things are just thermocouples. Ignore those. We're going to reclaim those later. So there's a big difference between a cheap $500 cooler and something like this. And we'll talk about this more later, I suppose, but it does largely come down to the way NVIDIA has structured this launch and the need to have $500 price target cards this time and not have everything be way over the advertised MSRP like you saw with the 2080 Ti and the 2080. So let's take it apart and see what's inside. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the limited edition foil graph logo shirt. This four-color foil shirt uses the iconic GN Graph logo with average 1% and 0.1% bar colors. It's printed on a soft, high-quality, and custom-made 100% cotton shirt and is available on store.gamersnexus.net until stock runs out. Once it's gone, we will not be making more of these shirts. We sold out within two weeks of our previous limited edition shirt, so click on the link below to pre-order now. So this teardown is pretty straightforward. First of all, you need the card, so 2070. XE Ultra for this, and we're working with just two primary screwdrivers. It's uh, just a larger Phillips and a smaller Phillips for the screws in the back plate. These are all one size, and then we're working on our GN Mod Mat, which is on store.gamersaccess.net if you want to pick up one of those. And these wires sticking out, these are just for K-type thermocouples that we smash in there for thermal testing, so those obviously do not come included. <laughs> Although we wouldn't be opposed to it, it would save some money. So we're going to reclaim those in the process of tearing this down. It's a pretty standard EVGA backplate design. One major upside from previous, from the 10 series, is they're no longer mixing, and actually, one of the, the XE Ultra on the 2080 Ti did this. They're no longer mixing the, uh, the actual like screw head size, where sometimes they'll have three that are much smaller, and you have to use a different size bit on them, which is unnecessary and very annoying. So they're not doing that here. Pretty straightforward. We have a bunch of these to take out. Then actually, you know what? We can stop in the middle of this so I can show you something. Uh, if we take out just the four cooler screws first, I, I was doing all of them because we're going to take it all apart anyway. But if we do the four cooler screws, you'll see just how easy this card is to take apart uh, as we found out when we put the thermocouples on them. So let's get the last two. Okay, so the screws removed so far for the back plate are irrelevant. Uh, removing these four will instantly free the cooler, and then you get this piece. This is just like a cable cover. It doesn't do anything. So you get that off, disconnect the cable, and uh, it does have an awful lot of pins in it, but it's, it's fairly safe to pull out. We would still recommend doing it a bit safer than I did there. That's all it takes to get the cooler off, which is really nice. We don't typically see them that easy to work with. So four screws to service the cooler and the thermal paste. Big props to EVGA for making that easy. It's on there secure enough that uh, they don't really need more screws than that. So pretty straightforward for that part, which makes servicing the card exceptionally easy, and that is a good thing for people who want to, the ability to easily replace the thermal paste later uh, if you're going to try and improve it as the paste cures or something like that. This one threads into a nut on the other side. Let's pull both those. Okay. So screw count in the back side is going to be, let's add them up, uh, one, two, three, four, six, it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty screws in the backside, not too bad. 
but we do have to take off some other parts as well. We'll get to those. So first of all, the back plate does have a lot of thermal pads on it. We have a test for thermal for the back plate versus no back plate in the review. If you're curious what the difference is, uh, it's not a lot. It'll definitely do something under some conditions, but not the conditions we tested in. And we have seen times with back plates where it actually is significant. We've seen times where it's completely irrelevant whether they make contact. Either way, though, making contact to a metal back plate is certainly better than being a hot box that's just on there with no thermal pads. So that's a good thing to see, even if it doesn't do a whole lot for GPU, VRM, or, or memory cooling. It doesn't do negative things, and that's good. <laughs> and then top side, we can't remove the base plate just yet. First, we need to remove uh, three screws that are hidden in the back. Those are right there. So it's these three. The rest of them can remain in there. All these I.O. screws can remain. Just need to pull those out. OK, so there's those three. And now uh, the part that was securing is right here. So this can be easily removed. And that's connected to the base plate. Yes. OK. OK, so we've reclaimed the thermocouples and now can show you the rest of the board. Looks awfully familiar. Looks pretty similar to a 2080 FE PCB. And that makes sense because it's an XE Ultra cooler that's on the 2080 and TI series as well. Maybe it was easier to transplant that way. Uh, but either way, thermal pads everywhere, as EBGA tends to do. And the big thing here on their base plate is that they are now doing a, a, a heat pipe under here, which we can reveal with a spudger. So under here, this thermal pad that connects to the uh, MOSFETs and some of the capacitors adjacent to the MOSFETs, you will see a nickel-plated copper heat pipe. There it is. And this is a kind of a new thing that GPU or video card uh, board partners are doing lately. It's not new, new, but it's something that hasn't been on cards in this class before. So that's measuring at 11 millimeters on the calipers, which in reality is, is probably about 10, tip is the typical size for these. There we go. So it's about 10 millimeters after re-zeroing it. And it's really short heat pipe, so doesn't doesn't uh, affect a whole lot, just the most important part, which is the MOSFETs. They're most likely to get the hottest anyway. And then next to that, you've got your inductor line plate, and this is just a, a nickel-plated copper plate. It does not have a heat pipe in it, but it is attached to the heat pipe adjacent to the inductors. Let's pull some of this up. So this surface bumps up a little bit there for clearance and also to to connect the heat pipe with another surface and leave them both uh, roughly the same height. So that's that's the primary part of the cooling for the VRM. And then VRAM cooling is all around there. Uh, the board itself, it does move to two power headers. And you can see they block out one of them uh, rather than the single power header on the original 2070 that we looked at. And then for components, it is micron memory on this particular model. There's no guarantee that's on all of them. There's a controller over here, which is a UP 9512P, 9512P. Uh, Buildzoid has talked about this part, I believe. For the MOSFETs, they are on semi 3170s, which look familiar for this generation as well. And that's for all of them. So that's for all the MOSFETs here. They're all 3170 on semi MOSFETs. And for that, we have a set of uh, two, four, six, eight, ten of them. So we're on an eight plus two for, actually it's pretty easy to see by just the choke labeling. So you see these 47s, that's going to be your memory VRM, and there's the two-phase for that. So two-phase memory VRM above the screwdriver, and then we have two, four, six, eight phase of the uh, V-core below the screwdriver, and those are all the same 3170 parts. Other parts, controllers on the back. We, yeah, this is this is basically a 2080 FE PCB. So on the back, same parts we've seen for this generation. UP 9512, 
I think that wraps up the board components. So there's really not a whole lot to this PCB that we haven't already seen because it is basically one we've already seen. Shunt resistors, if you care. Uh, there's a shunt resistor down here where you see that 5 milliohm R005, 5 milliohm shunt resistor. And there should be another one somewhere. Oh, two more. So we've got three. Let's just figure out what those where those go to in case anyone wants to shunt mod their car card, not their car. <laughs> there are three. Uh, so one's going to go to PCIe. It's probably this one. And then the other two will go to the power. But let's just figure it out. So we're going to take a 12 volt on a six and eight pin. It's the same thing. All they add is a sense and a ground on the eights. So we're going to take one of the yellow pins. That'll be on the inside line of the uh, pin out and then match that against the shunt resistor. And this is on our mod mat on store.gamersexus.net if you think that would be useful for you to have. So let's measure them and see which ones are continuous. That is not. Oh, there we go. Wasn't connected fully there. So this is continuous with that one. So we've got the uh, center shunt resistor down here that I'm on with the red probe. That is continuous with the six pin. And then just to make sure that these obviously aren't, that one clearly is not. That one clearly is not. So those, as suspected, are, are not connected to that one. So the middle one goes to the six pin and then Probably the top one goes to the eight, yes. So the top one goes to the eight pin, which you can see because we're getting more or less zero ohms. So it is a continuous circuit. And just to prove a point, this one, open loop or open line. So uh, that is going to be continuous with the PCIe slot. If you do short your shunts, don't shunt short the bottom shunt because you, you don't want to pull, pull more power through the PCIe slot. Uh, but pulling more through these is okay. Just be careful how you do go about shorting it. So the last thing here is what's on the die. And the answer to that is it's a TU-106-400A. That's the important part, the A after the 400. And then A1. The reason the A at the end of 400 is important is because there are sort of two sub of the RTX 2070. There's the 400 and then the 400A. The 400 is the one we saw on the original 2070 Black Edition, which is the $500 card. The 400A is going to be binned slightly higher by NVIDIA. So it's a pre-sorted GPU that's supposed to be a higher quality piece of silicon and theoretically, therefore, overclocks higher. And there's a quality difference there. There's a price difference there. NVIDIA doesn't give that to manufacturers for free. They pay a premium for the A suffix. And the A1 at the end is just revision number. So it's specifically not A1. What you need to look for is 400A or not A. This one is 400A. The base frequency for this operating in our review is about 1935 megahertz, whereas the 400 model for the 2070 Black is about 1800 megahertz. So massive difference there. Part of that is power delivery. Part of it is the pre-sorting of the GPU on the XE Ultra that we have here. So something that might be useful for you when buying cards. That's it for this one. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up our mod mat that we use in this video or our limited edition shirt while it's still on stock. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out directly. And subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.